Hello, everybody. It's so nice to see all of your faces. Uh, even though you are far away, it feels like we're all close together. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're excited to share with you about the arts program. Um, as we get started, I'm going to encourage people in the upper right hand corner um, of your screen, you should see something called speaker view. And I'm going to encourage you to um, just click on speaker view because I'm going to be showing um, going to be sharing my screen in a moment and then different faculty members are going to be speaking um, as their as their slides pop up so that way then you can hear from the faculty member and see their face as we're looking through the slides together so I'm actually going to throw it over right now we're gonna um, just introduce ourselves so you get to know the faces on your zoom call um, I am Miss Lisa Jacobs we have another Miss Jacobs at school Cindy Jacobs she's the Dean of Students so I like to differentiate myself from Cindy um, and I'm the chair of the arts department and I teach vocal music um, and Katie's gonna introduce herself to Hi everybody, um, my name is Katie Pistizzi and I teach dance at GAN. Um, uh, I lead the ensemble and teach all of the electives. And then in addition to teaching dance, I'm also the Ma Bar coordinator and that means that I coordinate the senior capstone experience. Good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Ray Daniels. Uh, I do instrumental music uh, here at GAN, and um, yeah, I also teach music theory, electronic music. Um, there's also um, chamber ensemble, jazz ensemble, um, songwriting. Um, and outside of GAN, I do a whole lot of other stuff too, like um, I'm on the faculty of Roger Williams University, Tufts University, and Bentley University, and I conduct the Fall River Symphony Orchestra. Thanks, Ray. Uh, I'm Linda. Uh, you can call me Linda. And I am the theater teacher at GAN. I teach our theater classes and uh, am in the, the advisor for Drama Club and direct our productions. We do two full length productions every year a play and a musical, and then a series of student uh, performed and student directed one acts in the spring, uh, which may be going digital this year. We will keep you posted. Uh, and in addition to the work I do at GAN, I direct uh, around the greater Boston area, and uh, it's work that I love to do. That's me. Everybody can hear me. My name is Miss Ruin. Um, I am the studio arts teacher at GAN Academy. I teach everything um, from ceramics to printmaking and textiles. Uh, we offer a lot of really fun classes. We do everything from, well, like I said, ceramics to textiles. So that means 2D and 3D work. We have really lucky because we have two different studios. They're absolutely gorgeous, lots of wonderful light. Um, but um, in my free time, myself, I like to paint, I like to draw, and when I can, I like to do ceramics. Hi folks, um, I'm Maya Wainhouse. I teach media arts, um, which is the other facet of visual arts here at GAN. Um, and media arts uh, encompasses all kinds of things. Um, it includes photography, so darkroom and digital photography, design, filmmaking, animation, um, and everything in between. Um, and uh, it's it's a really great um, great program here at GAN. We have also we have a brand new media arts lab, so with uh, wonderful equipment. So it's just, it's a great classroom and learning environment. Um, and beyond GAN, in terms of my own personal artwork, I'm really into photography and ceramics, and I'm always trying to learn new things and new skills. I think we're going to hear from a few students now. Anais, it's all you. Hi, everyone. I'm Anais. Um, I'm a part of the GAN Dance Company, and I've also taken a few dance classes here. Um, I'm also involved in a digital photography class and have taken media arts last year as a freshman. Hi, everyone. I'm David Cotton. I'm a junior at GAN. I'm currently in a songwriting class, jazz ensemble, and I'm the leader of Grateful Dead Club, which is GAN's Grateful Dead cover band. 
And, uh, and then in addition to that, I play bass every now and then with uh, the Red Clippers. Hi, my name is Josh. Um, I sing in Gans acapella group, The Shenanigans. Um, I perform with Gans improv team, Buttonfly. Um, I'm the vice president of the Red Curtain Drama Club and I do the theater production. Hi everyone, um, my name is Sydney. I'm a sophomore at GAN. I do um, both vocal ensembles, the Shenanigans and Red Cleffers. Um, last year I was a part of the GAN Dance Company and um, I also do all of the theater productions, um, the play, the musical, um, play hem, and I also take all of the theater classes. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Ari Woodham, I'm a junior and mostly involved in studio arts classes like uh, drawing and painting and advanced studio arts. But I've also taken uh, a little media arts have done Photoshop with Maya, so yeah. Thank you. Uh, hold on, I think I'm muted. Oh, we hear you. You can hear me? Okay, great, sorry. <laughs> I'm toggling back between different windows here. Um, thank you to everybody for introducing yourselves. Um, I want to give everybody a little bit of an overview of the arts program. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Hopefully this will work. Um, okay, so let's first, um, let's everybody make sure we're on mute. Um, can everybody see the screen? I know you're seeing kind of like the slides on the left hand side. You're just going to please bear with me on that one. Um, so do we have um, do we have any we may have some transfer students on the call as well, but I'm going to talk first a little bit about our ninth grade arts foundations program. Um, every incoming ninth grader takes a full year of arts. They take a semester of visual arts and that visual arts could either be studio arts um, that Miss Ruin teaches or media arts that Maya teaches. So either um, painting and drawing and, and sculpture and ceramics or media, which is the film, photography, animation, What's that audio? Um, and the performing, the performing arts um, options are theater, music, and dance. So at the end of ninth grade year, every student will have taken at least a full year of arts. Um, and in terms of other, hold on one second, because I want to make sure, yeah, if people could, <laughs> it's only because I get really distracted. <laughs> If people could just make sure they're on mute, that would be much appreciated. Um, so after ninth grade year, um, the arts graduation requirement at GAN um, is either one more semester of an arts course, which you'll hear about in, in just a few moments, or a full year of an arts ensemble. Um, so assuming that everybody on this call is an arts enthusiast, I want to be clear, that is the requirement, but it is the minimum requirement. So we have students who are on this call who have taken multiple arts courses every single semester at GAN. Um, and certainly there's many, many options for you to be able to do so. So we definitely encourage that. Um, um, I want to talk in general about um, the kind of our outcome goals for the program, um, which are um, which are kind of broken down into four categories. One of them is the creative My process. So we want you making, creative, creating, taking risks, collaborating with one another, um, doing multiple drafts, um, giving feedback to one another. These are all skills that we, um, that we um, pursue in our ninth grade uh, classes and beyond. Um, our other three kind of outcome buckets include arts literacy and appreciation. Um, and critique. So we want you to be artists, um, we want you to be makers, and we also want you to develop as arts appreciators. Um, and also through the creative process, um, we focus a lot on self-reflection, um, learning to tap into your creative voice and exploring your artistic voice and developing that through your four years um, at GAN. Um, and also just making meaning in the world. Um, 
we have kind of two ideas about what arts are and can be. And one of them is, you know, talking about um, talking about skills like, like collaboration and feedback. Those are skills that we can generalize to all of our other subjects. And so we like to really think about how we're growing learners in the arts program. And the other part of it, um, maybe the more important part, is arts just for art's sake. So we want you to immerse yourself in the creative process um, because arts is humanity, arts is life. And I think that especially at a time like we are in now, we are seeing how important um, the arts really are to us as, as a community and the world. So um, those are our broad overarching goals. Um, the upper arts, the upperclassmen arts classes, we have a lot of options. So I'm just gonna go through these slides fairly quickly so you can just take a look at them. Um, these are the courses that we are offering for next year. We have additional courses that are not listed here that are kind of um, offered on an alter alternate year basis. Um, so these are the visual arts courses and these are the performing arts courses. So the courses happen during the day um, between you know, 8.45 and 3.40, um, along with all the other academic courses. And then there's blocks at the end of the day called A and B blocks. A blocks meet on Mondays and Wednesdays and B blocks meet on Tuesdays and Thursdays for a little over an hour. And during that time, students can, there's a few options at GAN. Um, athletics happens during A and B blocks. Um, arts ensembles that you can see here also happen during A and B blocks. And robotics also happens during this time. So um, we have students who do athletics and arts, um, two different arts ensembles, robotics and arts. Um, so there are a lot of options. And in addition to all of our coursework, we also have extracurricular um, activities and other ways to get involved. So you can see here some of our clubs. Um, Dave Cotton is um, the, what do we, what do we call him? The director of the Grateful Dead Club. He's the he's the head honcho at the Grateful Dead Club. Um, Josh is on our improv team, Buttonfly, um, and you'll hear from Linda about um, the RCDC productions. So before, let me just make sure I touched on everything I wanted to. Um, oh, last last thing I wanted to say was um, at the end of every semester. Every student who's in an arts course has the opportunity pr to present their work, um, and that's both performing and visual arts. So we have a big arts festival. We have a winter arts festival in January at the end of first semester, and we have a spring arts festival at the end of second semester. Um, so it is expected that with some exceptions, depending on the class, like music theory, it's kind of tough to show your work. But otherwise, there are um, performance opportunities at school, and many ensembles have opportunities to perform outside of school as well. So I'm going to kick it over to Katie to talk a bit about the dance program. All right, hi everybody. So I first wanna start talking about Dance Company. Dance Company is our audition-based ensemble that meets during those after-school blocks, it meets during A block. Um, right now we have 14 dancers from all four grades in the ensemble. And the ensemble is based in um, a contemporary dance movement vocabulary, so more of like a modern style. Um, dance company will come together, they'll learn different techniques, and then we'll rehearse choreography for the art festivals at GAN. In addition to the ensemble, there are electives that you can take. We have a dance technique class, which is half ballet technique, and half modern technique. And then there's also a choreography and improv class where students are learning to be choreographers, make their own work, and also explore improvisations. The dance foundations class, which is the ninth grade um, dance option for students, that explores a variety of different dance styles. And the students also learn how to um, engage the choreographic process and get to create their own work and show their own choreography at the end of the semester. So um, no matter what level of dance 
uh, you have experienced, no matter what kind of dance style you love, there is a place for you to dance at dance. I guess I'm just gonna go, Lisa. Um, Sorry, I just wanted to ask if um, Anais had anything to add. Um, yeah, so I personally, I love taking like, um, I love being in the GAN dance ensemble. We, are, we all are really close and like getting to dance with different people outside from like my studio. If you dance at a studio, it's very nice to just like come together with all the grades and dance and connect through our movement. So it's just a very like nice like way to end the school day. Thanks, Sunny. Go ahead, Ray. Okay. Um, I, of course, um, do instrumental music and I also teach the Music Foundations course. Uh, in the Music Foundations course, uh, you really kind of get a foundation to um, study music throughout your time at GAN. Uh, although we do have uh, an auditioned ensemble, which is the jazz ensemble. Um, so uh, it is um, a pretty, pretty high level group, um, although we've been playing music um, from a variety of uh, eras and backgrounds. Um, uh, and then there's also a chamber ensemble, which um, you do have to have some sort of experience to join that group. Um, but there, again, are opportunities where you can start your own group and create your own bands. Um, right now, we're um, in songwriting, uh, second semester, and students are creating um, some of their own music and um, recording and performing that stuff. Uh, last semester was electronic music uh, where students had an opportunity, some for the first time ever, to kind of create original compositions. Um, so uh, that's uh, um, also available. Um, I'm going to just um, give you an opportunity to ask questions um, a little bit later um, about um, what we offer in those ensembles. Um, David, do you want to just uh, pop in and say anything about uh, your experience in the um, instrumental program? Sure. Um, just one thing that I really noticed when I came to GAN is I came in with really no knowledge of any instrument. Like I had kind of, uh, my brother had taught me like a little ukulele and a little guitar. And so uh, my brother at the time was playing in the Grateful Dead Club and I was just starting to pick up the bass. So I got into there since bassists are typically pretty rare. So I got to play with a group for like about a year and a half and really learned my instrument and not just like in my room with people. And then from there, I was able to, to get into jazz band once the older bassist uh, Max had graduated. So I kind of got to build up my skills in Grateful Dead Club, which isn't like audition based. We kind of just take, uh, we get musicians as we need them. And then I was able to learn in that and then play in jazz band where like, I'm able to read music pretty well and really able to play music at a pretty high level that freshman year I definitely couldn't have, but I definitely was kind of moved up through the levels at GAN, which was really awesome. Uh, I also wanna add on to that. If you see the slide here, you get a chance to see a, a little picture of the jazz ensemble. Um, but um, on, on the other uh, slide that you see kind of um, a, a Zoom interview here, uh, here, uh, Dave, can you just talk about that one really quickly? Yeah, that slide to the left there. Yeah. So that was um, that was a little interview we got to do last semester as part of the electronic music class. Mr. Daniels assigned us to uh, we all to research a different musical innovator, and I immediately found on the list he gave us that there was the CEO of Fender Guitars, which. They're like the biggest guitar manufacturer in the world. You've probably, you've heard their guitars on like a thousand different songs, really an iconic uh, instrument and just an iconic company. And so Mr. Daniels was kind of nagging at me like, come on, Dave, just email him. It's okay, he'll respond. come on, email him, you should get in touch. So I finally, I finally did it. I just emailed him and within a couple of hours he emailed, I had asked him like, would you be interested in meeting with my class or doing a video call? I know you're based in California. And he emailed back in a couple of hours like, yeah, I'll set something up tomorrow. So he sent us back some times. Mr. Daniels answered back. We had a meeting, a video call about a week later, which was super cool. And so we got to talk to the CEO of this like of this company worth like hundreds of millions of dollars. And I 
Mr. Daniels asked me to prepare a questions list. So I just, we all got to sit down with like this guy who's really leading the music industry right now and making the best instruments and the most popular instruments. And this person who's really at the top was just like projected on a screen in the library, which was really, really cool. It's actually kind of funny because um, in that class and, and in, in our class now, um, when we do research on uh, with, uh, a particular song, right now we're doing a, a research project on uh, what's, the, what's the best song in the past decade. And, and I also encourage the students, go in and invite that person to come to GAN and do an interview. And you never know, they may come just like um, this person did. So we like to kind of reach out and um, see what can happen. Uh, I, I kind of like that approach on a lot of things. Uh, I think there are some questions um, regarding some of the ensembles or instrumental. Um, are we taking questions now, Lisa? Actually, if we could, um, let's zoom through the others. Um, okay, sure. We'll come back to questions at the end. All right, great. I'll, I'll, I'll let someone else talk now. Thanks, Ray. And guys, believe me, if I told you that if you heard Dave Cotton play bass now, you'd be like, no way, Jose, did you start playing three years ago? It's pretty amazing. Thank you. All right, Linda. Hi, everybody. Uh, so we're just going to talk a little bit more about theater at GAN. So uh, really the heart of theater at GAN is two things. There's the classes that you can take during the day, um, and then there's uh, drama club, which happens on Fridays and after school. So uh, drama club, which Josh and Sydney can both speak more to, as well as I saw Sarah somewhere hanging out there uh, in our meeting, um, is really a student-led, student-centered club. It is oldest and the largest club at GAN Academy. Uh, and we meet weekly on Fridays. Uh, I'm the advisor, but there's a student elected board who uh, work with me to plan all the meetings and all of the activities. And uh, it's really social time to do just to hang out and share our love of, of theater, to play games together. Uh, and we have a dramatone, which is a Shabbatone. We're the only club that has our own dedicated Shabbatone. And uh, so the club is this like really just wonderful community of people who share this interest. Um, and many people, although not all people who attend drama club, um, also uh, do our productions uh, either as actors or as technicians. So uh, everything that happens at Hi Ziba, um, everything that happens uh, at uh, the, in the productions is again, really driven by student work, student-centric work. So. Students participate in all aspects of the tech crew, lighting design, sound design, costume design, uh, and uh, run crew, and prop design, all the different aspects of, of bringing the show uh, to life, as well as being actors on the stage. Uh, we have a, like I said earlier, a play in the fall, a musical in the late winter, uh, and in the spring we do Play Hem, which is uh, a play on the word mayhem. It's this like lovely organized chaos of student directed one acts that happen all around the school and kind of pop out from the theater space and sort of take over an academy for an evening uh, and fill it with art. So um, it's really just an incredible, an incredible club, an incredible set of productions, and uh, the students pick our shows. So uh, we go through a season selection process in the spring, again, led by the board, guided by me, uh, where the students really take a lot of ownership, not just over the creation of the plays, but even over getting to say which productions we're going to do for the upcoming year. Um, and uh, our classes after theater foundations, you can take a wide array of uh, advanced classes that are mixed grades. So 10th graders through 12th graders all taking class together. Uh, this year, um, Sydney's in my physical theater class right now. She took my scene study class in the, uh, in the fall, which is called Page to Stage. Um, I've taught devised theater, theater and social change. Next year, I'll be teaching directing for the stage. So I try to mix it up every year so that if you wanted to really dedicate yourself to an, a theater education at GAN, you could take a wide array of classes and by the time you graduate really have touched on a lot of different areas of work. Um, so Sid, if you have anything you want to add, you can pop in. Yeah, I just want to say like the amount I have learned in, I've been at GAN for two years. I'm a sophomore. I have learned so much. I've taken um, theater foundations, physical theater, page to stage. Um, I've acted in the plays and um, play hem. 
and I did the musical this year. Last year I couldn't, so I did costumes. And then I also did, um, last year, one of the seniors of our projects was she wrote and put on a production and I helped with the costumes and like, I did the spotlight for that show. I had never done that before. I learned two days before and now I know how to do it. And it was like, it was so cool. And I just learned so much in such a short amount of time. Thanks, Sid. Um, I want to, you reminded me, Sydney, I wanted to add, right? Sydney couldn't do the musical last year because she had her sister's bat mitzvah. Um, not because she didn't get accepted to the musical. Every production at GAN is open cast. So uh, the biggest barrier is just getting over that fear of auditioning. And once you do, uh, you're part of the team. Uh, and uh, yeah, like Sydney said, there's just a lot of different ways to engage with, with theater and arts at GAN and uh, learn from your peers about how to do things and get involved in areas of theater that you haven't before and also learn from experts. Uh, we work with professional lighting designer, a professional set designer who come in and work directly with the students to teach skills uh, beyond the skills that I'm teaching. Thank you. Thanks guys. Um, before we head on to visual arts, um, I realized I, um, I want to talk for just a brief moment about vocal music again and give Josh Sherman, um, who you may have uh, recognized um, as the handsome face of Charlie Brown on the theater slide. Um, a chance to pop in as well. Um, again, we have um, a choir and an acapella group. Our choir is Red Cleffers, and um, our acapella group is called Shenanigans, and they meet during A and B blocks. Um, and Shenanigans is an auditioned group um, that requires just a little bit more of a nuanced ear. So many students um, come in first to Red Cleffers and develop those skills um, before going on to join Shenanigans as well. Um, I also teach a class called Music, Mind, and Meaning, um, which is a, um, a course in the psychology of music. Um, my background is in music therapy um, and in mental health counseling, so that is a subject that I feel um, particularly passionate about, and I feel really lucky to be able to teach it at GAN. Um, but Josh, can you uh, add anything? Do you want to add anything about the vocal program at GAN? Yeah, so when I was in ninth grade, um, I first was in Red Cleffers, the choir. Uh, and like Ms. Jacob said, that was a really great introductory, introductory uh, group for me to be in because the, the way that that group works is that we come in, we warm up as a group, and then instead of jumping right into our music and our repertoire, we do some learning. Um, and I had never really had much of a background in like mu reading music or rhythms or anything like that. Um, and so when I was first in the, in the beginning of that year, I was new to GAN and like new to all the people and I was like kind of nervous. And so having that first year of Red Cleffers where I got to like learn everything that I felt that I needed to know by the time I auditioned at the end of that year for Shenanigans um, and getting to know all the people and Ms. Jacobs, that was a really great uh, like segue for me. Thanks, Josh. All right, Landa, take it away. Hey, everyone. Um, so there's a lot to cover. We, in the studio arts area, we, we really do a lot. So um, not just that teeny tiny list, but we've had so many different opportunities in both the 2D and the 3D. But it all starts with studio arts foundations, which is just what it sounds like. So we really focus on giving every student the right tools to begin their studio arts journey, which kind of covers um, uh, value and observational drawing, color theory. I mean, oh my gosh, we cover everything. So printmaking, painting, um, all of that too is um, related to art history. So we look at a lot of artwork and we use the students vocabulary to talk about the artwork. So we use something called visual thinking strategies and that's just what I've described. So it's um, using the students knowledge to really kind of 
um, figure out what paintings are telling us and what those stories are. And my job and well, what I love to do with the students is to get them to come up with their own stories and tell that visually. So a lot of the things that I focus on are those meaning making situations. So what stories do I have that I can share with others? So that's every part of um, every single unit. So this picture that you see right here in the middle, um, it's a watercolor painting that we, um, I was teaching students about how to use a grid to, um, when they're referencing a picture that's incredibly detailed. Um, it's the same method that I had my students do when we were creating those murals that you see in the top left hand corner. Um, so we, there's a lot of overlap between other courses like, you know, math and science and other things. Um, speaking of collaboration, we do a lot of collaborating with other classes, just as I described. Um, but one class in particular that's been really fun is CDNF. Um, we've, in my ceramics class, one project that was particularly interesting was creating 3D printed die cuts for the extruder, which if you've ever played with Play-Doh, it's basically those machines where you put the Play-Doh in and you squeeze it out, um, but it's a, a huge one. And actually, Dave, you could probably speak to that a little bit because um, you made that in your foundations class, which you, another amazing, interesting instrument. Okay, we'll go touch on that a little bit later. Um, but, <laughs> excuse me, other than studio arts, we cover a lot of different things. Um, some of the upper level courses that you can take, like we touched on before, drawing and painting, um, printmaking and textiles right now, which is really fun. Even though the students are at home before we left, we actually sent them home with laser cut loom. So now everyone at home right now is has been weaving on their amazing backstrap loom. Um, and it's just, you know, another example of how we can, uh, we're constantly trying to collaborate with other departments and really think creatively and outside of just our rooms. Um, so, and if anybody has questions a little bit later about the particulars of projects or mediums, um, just ask me because I'm probably forgetting a million things because we cover so many different materials and um, topics. So, um, Ari, do you want to touch, do you want to jump in and say anything about Advanced Studio? This is the first year we're running Advanced Studio. Um, it's very similar to um, AP Arts, and so right now they're working on a concentration, which is very individual project based. Okay, so Ari, do you want to say anything about that? Yeah, sure. Now, what I, I, what I would say is that, like, if you go into GAN with an interest in studio arts, then those first few classes you take, you'll build up the basic skills, and you, like, over time, and then once you if you keep that interest and you get to like more upper upper level classes like drawing and painting or advanced studio arts, then you have those skills. So you're given the freedom to like carry out projects more focused on your own interests, which is really good because so, then you have you have those skills to do to carry out those interests, which is yeah, it's great. Nice. Uh, that was well said. And then um, just one last thing before we move on. Could, would you mind sharing what your current concentration is and how you've managed to kind of bring all that together? Yeah, sure. So we, basically, we were assigned to kind of come up with a question we wanted to answer through our art. So I chose to kind of focus on like viewer perspective and how that's kind of shaped through how an artist sees a place. So I kind of chose to focus on like how, how can I present one place in a few different ways and how do those different ways shape somebody else's perspective, if, especially if that person has never been to that place before, because it kind of, it's up to the artist, like what details they're going to include, what colors, what mediums they use. And I'm just really interested, like how can an artist shape somebody else's view? of something else. Nice, thank, thank you. Thanks, Londa, thanks, Ari. Maya, take it away. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, entering the world of media arts now, um, we there's a whole range of different opportunities in media arts. Um, as Ms. Ruin says, starting with the Media Arts Foundations, which I believe there's a handful of folks on the call, um, Josh, Anais, um, 
who uh, took the class um, with in ninth grade. Um, and it's really an overview. It's a, it's a chance for people to get um, a handle on different types of media arts, different equipment. So in that, uh, in that class, um, we kind of hit a bunch of different things. So we hit some photography. We think about um, animation. We've done public service announcements and other films. Um, we think a little bit about graphic design. We sort of think about um, news media and about just media in general and think about how, how to analyze that. Um, and then from there, students can have an opportunity to take a variety of electives. Um, so you could see in this photo, uh, on the slide, um, we do a digital photo course, which Anais is in. Um, and uh, we offer that. We also offer darkroom photography, which I'm really excited about because um, it was a huge part of my life in high school and now I get to teach it and a lot of schools don't have the facilities anymore um, but we have a dark room it's thriving um, and it's a really really fun place and popular class um, we also have um, graphic design class we have animation and filmmaking so there's a whole range and you know a lot of times students come in and they maybe have not worked in digital mediums before or in the dark room before um, which is totally fine um, but by the end hopefully everybody um, is feeling good about it um, and getting to try out some new things um, also it's a really cool opportunity if people are interested in learning any of the Adobe programs um, we learn about Photoshop Illustrator um, we do um, some editing in Premiere Pro we use all kinds of those tools and um, those are actually professional level tools. So you're gonna be using professional level cameras, professional level um, software, um, it's, uh, and which um, I think can really build you up and you know, it may seem like it's far away, but these are things that can actually build into a career um, or be put on a resume if it's something that you're interested in. Um, and I love doing interdisciplinary things, a lot of collaboration um, and a lot of um, teamwork and group work and just kind of going out of the comfort zone and trying a lot of new things. Um, I don't know if that was a really quick overview. I don't know if any of the folks who are taking or have taken classes with me want to weigh in on anything, um, but that's that's kind of the basics. Um, yeah, I'll say something. So um, last year I went into media, the Media Arts Cl Foundation's class with like little knowledge of like Photoshop and like all the editing apps that you can get on like your computer. And I definitely learned like so much and I like still use those skills outside, even if I don't have like a project for my digital photography class, I'll still use those. Or like, like if I want to post a photo for social media or like a video, I'll have like the skills just to post. See. Great. Thanks, Anais. Thanks, Anais. Thank you, Maya. Thank you to all yeah. of the, the faculty and students who shared about our programs. Um, I want to leave time for questions because I'm sure you guys have some. There's only one more thing I want to talk about very briefly, which is um, we in the arts department are, are able to enjoy different um, types of relationships with our students because we spend a different kind of time with them. Um, and I just want to say, like, um, it's lovely to hear from all of all of our art students here. I know that um, the relationships that students form with each other in the arts courses, um, as well as their teachers, tend to be really close. Um, and in general, we we think of ourselves as one um, community of artists. So um, I'm sure some of the students can can speak to that too. Um, but right now, um, we can take it off speaker view. I'm going to stop sharing my screen um, and let's open it up for questions. I saw a question from Ella in the chat that I think Anais spoke to about dance, but I just wanted to address about theater. Um, Ella, the short answer is maybe. Um, and that's the most honest that I can be. The question was, um, can you be a part of a dance team outside of GAN and still participate in the dance company or musical? Anais spoke to the dance company speak piece. Um, the, it really depends on uh, sort of what uh, you're interested in, how you're interested in participating in the musical. So this year for the first time, uh, we introduced a dance core to the musical, uh, Katie. Uh, was our choreographer, uh, and it was a way to get uh, dancers involved in the musical that was a little bit less time intensive. Um, Sarah, who I saw on the call earlier, um, was, hi, shy, um, was uh, part of our dance corps. 
and uh, so maybe she could speak to what that was like. Um, and the truth is that like we want to make as much space for everybody to participate in everything as possible while also honoring the commitment um, that it, and what the commitment means to really fully dedicate yourself to putting on a production in a collaborative process. So we can talk more about that offline if you want to get more specific. Um, and Was there an ensemble question somewhere in the chat that we may have missed? Yes, I think there was someone that had a question about ensembles. Um, so um, I don't know what specific type of ensembles, but if, I guess, Ray, do you want to talk a little bit about some of your ensembles? Yeah, if we could, if I could figure out what that question was, um, if someone had that question. Yeah, we oh, had the question. Um, it was just a, uh, you said jazz ensemble, and then I think you mentioned another ensemble. And Chamber, Chamber ensemble. And yes. what kind of instruments um, are in those ensembles? So jazz ensemble has traditional jazz um, instruments, um, saxophones, trumpets, um, percussion, keyboard instruments. Um, our chamber ensemble, we usually take anything, and I because I arrange uh, all original music for that ensemble. So we've had ensembles with harps and violins and flutes and and all sorts of uh, instruments. So um, we can pretty much accommodate mostly anything in either one of these those ensembles. French horn? Absolutely French horn. <laughs> if, we had a, we, if we had a French horn, I'd do a French horn dance for you. It was kind of all cool. right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, you might. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions about the ensembles? There's, uh, a question, there's a question about, can you do it all? Can you do mm. um, all of these amazing arts at the same time? And how does that work? I'll just say this from, from my perspective. You can do as much as you can handle and as much as you can commit to uh, a particular group. But unfortunately, that doesn't encompass everything. Uh, you will have to make some choices. Um, and that's just the, the fact of it. You'll, you will have to decide on some things. We do have, um, we do make allowances in our ensembles for students to take one trimester off to do um, an athletic. So, um, I think Sydney this year was, um, did Red Cleffers for two trimesters and uh, um, I can't remember volleyball soccer but yeah soccer for soccer for the third so um, it is possible you know Josh can speak to that a little bit as well I'm sure it is it's hard because there's a lot to do and there's a lot of cool fun interesting stuff to do and so students do have to make choices as Mr. Daniels was saying but I will say that um, um, the arts and the robotics and um, the athletics department are very um, in very close communication and we do understand that students have tough choices to make so we we do our best to kind of support students um, helping make those decisions and also navigating them with their various um, with their coach and their ensemble director um, or their robotics team lead um, so Yes, there are hard choices, and we understand those choices and, and try to help support our students through them. I also want to just add that, um, and, I'm, and I'm thinking of this because Maya mentioned earlier um, that there's a lot of technology, uh, industry um, level technology that's used in um, visual arts, uh, as well as in musical arts. Um, we learn uh, digital audio workstations. Uh, we also learn uh, notation software uh, like Sibelius um, for those of you who are composers. In our foundations class, um, our students write the first movement of a, uh, a symphony. So you, you actually get a chance to write a symphony and you also do a film score um, um, for a movie trailer. So you really get a chance to kind of uh, learn different software and really put your talents uh, to work. Um, one thing that I want to encourage um, all of you is to try something that you've probably never tried before. 
Uh, I've kind of heard echoes of that. You do not know what you will discover about yourself. Um, and, and also be courageous, go out on a limb and, and take a risk. You might like it. So any other questions, you guys can stick them in the chat box. Um, and while you guys are formulating questions, um, students, by the way, feel free to jump in if you want to add anything to, to the answers. Um, I just wanted to um, briefly plug, we have three, we're offering um, satyrs, special satyrs for our um, for middle schoolers next week. Um, and the arts department is actually doing three different satyrs. We have um, a visual arts based one. These are on Tuesday from 11, I think it's 11.30 to 12.30. Um, I may be slightly wrong on the timing. We, we can send you the exact info. We have a visual arts based one um, where you'll be doing photography and, um, and um, working with tinfoil and making an illuminated panel. Um, and we have a Seder with Mr. Daniels and he's doing drop a beat for bitter herbs and you're going to get to learn how to use a digital audio workstation um, and put your thoughts and ideas into sound and share that with the group. Um, and that's, that's, I'm sorry Lisa to interrupt. That will be with MC uh, One Bad Bro. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Daniels is MC One Bad Bro, just in case you didn't get that. Um, and Linda is going to be leading a Seder, um, kind of following the components of the Seder um, and person doing personal storytelling um, and collaborative um, collaborative work um, with the themes of the of the Haggadah, the book that we read at the Seder. Um, Linda, did you want to add anything to that, or Londa and Maya? Uh, only just to say that it's not just me. There are a bunch of um, amazing drama club alum who are also popping in to participate so, and, and working with me on the planning. And the illustrious Dave Cotton will be helping with Drop a Beat for Bitter Herbs as well. Awesome. Do we have any last questions? We are going to be putting this on our accepted students landing page. So you will have a recording of this. We're going to put links, um, all of the links that were in there today, we'll definitely add as well. Um, and I want to just acknowledge again, um, this amazing group of faculty who has brought arts home to each one of these students' living rooms. They planned ahead. They knew it was coming, sent them with, as you heard, um, weaving looms. I know somebody in one of Wanda's um, costume making classes brought home a whole, um, a whole box of stuff to create a, a costume. So these teachers are amazing. And just because we're not together in person, um, they are continuing their, their coursework at home and, and doing it so well. So thank you to all of you so much for, for your amazing time, effort, and dedication to GAN. Um, to our, stu our current students today, our, um, our wonderful artists, thank you so much. You did an amazing job as always, but we appreciate your time. We know you've been on Zoom in class all day. so. Uh, Thank you to, to you and to all of our accepted students and families. We hope this gives you another little glimpse of GAN, what you can do only at GAN. Um, GAN rocks. We are awesome. I wish I could have all of our, our, um, our singers come on and say, oh, like, thank you as a, as a group. But um, Lisa's like, oh, no. But really, thank you all. <laughs> and <volunteer> Josh. <laughs> keep, keep the questions coming. Um, we are here to help you and support you as you go through this process. And we hope to see you all at GAN in September. Thank you, everybody. That's a wrap. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. We're good to leave? You're good to leave. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.